In this short video, I'm going to show you how to open up the charts that you might want to see, plus I'm going to show you a number of different tips that maybe you weren't aware of, and also show you some of the more common problems that I've seen when people are trying to open up their charts. To get started, I'm going to click on the file, choose open, and this is going to launch what we call our open dialog. Now inside the open dialog, the first thing you want to do is underneath your options, you can choose whether you want to see your securities listed either by the symbol or the company name. And then the third option down is called the load options, which allows you to control how much data is going to be loaded and how much is going to be displayed. For end of day data, I like to load a thousand records, which equates to about four years of historical data. That'll give me plenty of data for most of my indicators. Now, first of all, you'll see that the data is actually divided up into these different folders. So for example, if you want to go to a particular list or an index of securities, what you can do is open up the appropriate folder and then navigate to whatever that folder might be. So for example, I'll open up the Dow Utilities and here I can see the stocks that are listed underneath Dow Utilities. Let me go back here to our data on demand. I'll click on my Reuters data link and this will take us back to our main directory. If you know exactly what security it is that you want to open up, you can of course just type in the symbol down here at the bottom. So what this will do is this will narrow down all the securities that begin with the AAPL for the symbol. What the program will do by default is when you click on open, it's going to open up the first security inside this list. So in this case, if I click on open, it'll open up the correct symbol. Let's go back to that for a second. Let's open up that dialog again. I'll click on the open folder button. But this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in a symbol for GE, which is just the symbols of GE. But you'll see that the first symbol that's listed down here is actually the three month Euro dollar Globex. So if I click on open, what it'll do is it'll try to open up that future symbol. And again, if that's not what you were interested in, you were interested in open up GE the stock, what you need to do instead is you need to select it and then click on the open. Something else that you might notice when you're opening up your securities is that when you're working with the local data files over here on the left hand side, and let's say that you're inside a folder called the S&P 500 and then we want to open up a security for example such as Adobe. If I type in the symbol down here at the bottom, you'll notice that the list doesn't get narrowed down to just Adobe. Everything else remains. That's just the way that it works with local data. The only time that the list actually changes as you're typing in the symbol is with your data on demand. So let's go ahead and open up this chart of Adobe. And so right now what we are is we're inside the S&P 500 directory. And the thing to keep in mind when working with local data is that your data is only current up until the last time you downloaded the data. Let's go back to our open dialog. And this time what I'll do is again I'll click on my data on demand button. I'll type in a symbol such as Amazon. I'll hit my enter key and open up that chart. Now here's a fast way to jump between securities. Instead of actually going back and choosing the open dialog and selecting your security, once you have your chart open, you can just type in your symbol and open up the chart that way as well. So for example, let's say I want to jump over to Netflix. I'll type in NFLX. This will open up what's called the choose a security window. Now before I actually open up the chart here, one other thing I want to point out here is you also have a button here called options. And if you select this options, you can choose how that chart's going to open up, whether it's going to use the smart chart or it's going to take everything that we have on this chart in the background and apply it to that chart when it opens up. So I'll choose the second radio button and click on OK, and it'll open up the security that's of interest to me. This is a real nice way to jump between charts by just typing in your symbol and then opening up the chart directly. One of the problems that I've seen people run into with this when they type in a symbol and the chart doesn't open up is, is that they're in the wrong directory. So for example, if I was in a local data file, for example, my S&P 500 local data file, and let's say that I'm looking at a particular chart inside of this folder, and then I try to jump to a security that's outside the folder, it won't work. For example, again, I'm in the S&P 500 local data file. This is data that I've downloaded to my hard drive and I try to jump to a symbol that's outside of it, for example, like Baidu, I'll click my enter key and what will happen is, is it can't find it inside that directory and it wants to know if I want to create a new security for this. 
so when you're working with local data files it still works the same way if you want to open up a security that's inside that folder so again I'm inside the S&P 500 local data file and if I want to jump to another security inside the S&P 500 for example like IBM I can type in the symbol and it opens up the local data chart and if you want to open up more than one chart at a time when you're typing in your symbol down here under the symbol box just make sure and separate your symbols with a comma that way you can open up as many different ones as you want if you're running the real-time version of Metasoc the only difference is you need to put the country code before the symbol so I hope that that's been helpful and for more Metastock training please visit our site at www.learnmetastock.com